Hi, this is Professor Joseph Rubens, and in our series on organizational behavior, this time I want to present you a knowledge clip on leadership in organizations. Well, leadership is a much discussed topic, especially if we look at the news, we check the newspapers, we seem to notice that it is critical to organizational success and that very often great leaders are presented as heroes or as villains. Let's take for example Steve Jobs. When he was heading Apple, all sorts of amazing things were happening. You may even remember in the news that at some point Steve had left Apple and then Apple went down and then Steve came back and hey, Apple was doing great again. Another one is Bill Gates. And also, when things go wrong in an organization, very often they point to somebody and say, aha, it was the CEO who took away the money or who made really bad decisions. What we also find in the news is that very often these leaders are different from us regular common people. They have special characteristics or qualities which mark them as different. I'll exaggerate a bit, but for example, they wake up at four in the morning, go jogging, then they have their power breakfast inside their limousine which drives them straight to company headquarters where they take a helicopter to meet very, very important people and discuss about grand strategies and do amazing things to have the company do well. Very often it's presented that way. They have sort of amazing talents, which again, most of us don't have. And of course, they have high levels of responsibility. These people are dealing with billions and are also dealing with people, with lives, with economies. And last but not least, in the news, we often find that these people are extremely well remunerated. And there are also discussions about that. Because some people say, well, if we believe in project teams, if we believe that self-organization is actually the best, and if we believe that everybody counts, how come you are making a hundred times more than I am? You're not working a hundred times harder than I am, but somehow you get a bigger piece of the cake. So all these discussions are happening in the news. So, so leadership really is an important topic. Well, in this video clip, Briefly start by telling you about looking to theories as tools. Then we'll talk about authority and power, going into leadership theories. And those are the four ones we will basically discuss. There is another one, transformative leadership, will not be discussed in these clips. And of course, in other textbooks, you find another setup. But this is the one we chose based on an Oxford textbook. Theories as tools. Well, what do I mean by this? A funky word is also social constructs. Well, what I mean by this is, especially in management science, there are many, many theories. Some of these theories are extremely good. Other theories, I would call them they're also based on marketing, based on the fact that, hey, you're a professor, you need to publish, so you're going to create a new theory. And if you really, really deeply look into the theory, you realize it not, it's not so much different than what somebody else wrote. But, you know, this person needs to add his little flavor. Now, therefore, I suggest the viewer, the listener, to think of a theory as a tool. What I mean by this is, if you look, for example, at the great man theory, and then you try to understand life through that theory, and you say, wow, this really works for me. I have better understanding, I can do things better, great. Then for you, 
this great man theory is like a hammer. And you know, every time I need to punch something in, then I'm going to take my great man theory, I'm going to take my hammer. But somebody else may say, well, actually, those behavioral theories, they're really great. And for me, they're like scissors that cut through some of the nonsense. So, again, use theories that make sense to you, and those who don't, well, discard them. Authority and power. Let's first talk about authority. And for this, we'll take a few steps back into the past to talk about Max Weber, who also created bureaucracy, these concepts of bureaucracy, as you may remember from previous clips. The way he looked at authority was, and again, we're talking about late 19th, early 20th century, he said, well, there's really three types. Either traditional authority, which is you have a king and an aristocracy, and they may be complete fools, but it doesn't matter. They have authority. They set the rules. And sometimes not in your advantage. If you're poor and you steal a chicken from the king, he may actually kill you. However, the king can come to your farm, steal all your chickens, and you will just have to say, wow, isn't it wonderful that my chickens will be eaten by our beloved king. Second type of leadership was the charismatic one. And again, late 19th century, there were a lot of, especially men, that were telling the masses to do things. Remember, this is close to the Russian Revolution, to Lenin, to people who were able to talk to hundreds of thousands of people and get them moving. Great. The problem with those people is the moment they had to get down to business and just you know do regular practical things, they weren't so useful anymore. So Weber said, what we really need, and it's the only good type of authority, is legitimate authority. And that really means whoever is in charge knows what he is doing. If you're going to build a bridge, you want an expert engineer with 20 years of, years of experience who can handle workers, deal with teams, who knows what she or he is doing. And then also, naturally, people will follow them. Because if we ask the question, why do we do what a manager tells us? Well, hopefully, because we say, we believe that this person knows what he or she's doing. And we say, yeah, great, that makes sense. But we would not nowadays, or preferably not follow a manager who's charismatic and who just says, yes, we're going to export to China. And then you look at the balance sheet and you say, wait a minute, we don't have capital for that. Or we don't want a crazy king who says, from now on, everybody has to dye, dye their hair purple. I mean, small reference to the North Korean chief. So, authority. And when we look at types of authority or also types of power, here's a, a short list of how these people can use power. The first type, of course, is rewarding power. Well, if your manager can decide whether you will receive a bonus or not, that definitely makes him powerful. But there's also coercive power. If your manager can say, your boss can say, goodbye, well, that's power. Referent power is the charisma that Weber also talked about. You know, some people just have this kind of charm and they can get you to move, to do things, they can inspire you. It's a power. You have legitimate power, as previously discussed, expert power. If you are the only one in your company who knows how to work with the computer, well, then everybody will come and ask you when there is a problem. 
The same with information power. If you're the one who really knows what goes on, then people will have to come to you to ask you for that. Affiliation power means who do you know? Who are you affiliated with? Like networking. And also, of course, group power. And that can mean that sometimes you are a member of an exclusive group who has more information than others who are not a member of that group. Obedience to authority research. Well, for this, I'd like to show you the Stanley Milgram clip. 